In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some applications of exponential functions. And the first thing we are going to look at is right here, exponential growth and decay. Uh, there are a lot of things that follow an exponential growth model um, or exponential decay. Exponential growth would be things like um, compounded interest or maybe population growth. Uh, exponential decay might be something like um, how a drug uh, decays in your body after you take it or uh, maybe a radioactive substance can have exponential decay. Um, at any rate, we have two um, sort of formulas here, and they are almost, almost the same. Really, it is the same formula, except for this one little piece right here. If we're talking about exponential growth, what we have in the parentheses here, what we have in our base is 1 plus our growth rate. That would be your percent, given in the problem. If it's exponential decay, we just have 1 minus that growth rate. Um, which again would be the percent given in the problem. So our variables here, our function is going to calculate how much of this substance or how much money or how many people we have after time t. A sub zero is our starting amount, R is our growth rate. That will be given typically in the problem as a percent, but you will need to change it into a decimal form when you use it in a formula. And t will be time, and the units of time will depend on the specific problem you're looking at. So let's look at a couple examples. In this first one, um, the world population in 2000 was approximately 6.08 billion. Assume that the population grows at about 1.26% annually. What would you expect the world population to be in 2012? Um, so let's look at the values we have. We do have a starting value. A sub 0 in this case, it's going to be 6.08, that was 6.08 billion, that was the starting population in the year 2000. We do have a rate, it's increasing, population is increasing at 1.26% every year. And again, in the problem, we want to change that to a decimal, so we'd be using that as 0 0.0126. And then finally, we do have a time. Um, we knew the world population in the year 2000, and we want to calculate it in 2012. So our time is going to be 12. 12 years have gone by. And we can plug all of those into our, fam into our formula here. So we are going to calculate the amount, the population, after 12 years have gone by. And that's going to be the starting value times 1 plus, since it's exponential growth, 0.0126 raised to the power of, oh, sorry, t. And t, our time in this case, is 12. Okay, we have had everything plugged in here on our formula, so it's just calculator work at this point. Um, depending on what kind of calculator you have, if you have a multi-view calculator, you might be able to enter this all in one statement. If you use the parentheses, let's see if I can show you here on this online calculator, 6.08 times 1 plus 0 0.0126. And then we want to raise that whole thing, this button right here, x to the y, or on your calculator it might look like a caret, and that's how you get an exponent, raised to the power of 12. And you can see that gives us, we probably round that to a couple decimal places, 7.07. .07. And since um, our original number was in billions, that number is also in billions. So we are estimating that the world population in the year 2012 would be about 7.07 .07 billion. Now, if you have an older calculator that doesn't have the multi-view feature, um, you might need to enter this in a little more uh, stepwise, kind of take into account the uh, orders of operations. So you would do the um, arithmetic inside the parentheses first, hit enter and get a value, and then you would raise that to your exponent, raise to the power of 12, hit enter again, and get that value, and then we would multiply that by 6.08, and there it, there it is, our same answer. So again, that just depends on what version of calculator that you have. Okay, let's look at another example. In this one, we've got an adult takes 400 milligrams of ibuprofen. Each hour, the amount of ibuprofen in the person's system decreases by about 29%. How much ibuprofen is left in the body after six hours? Okay, so again, we have an initial amount, our A sub 0, 
is 400 milligrams. We have a, a rate. This time it's a decay rate, not a growth rate. It's 29%. And again, when we go to use that in our problem, we're going to change it to its decimal form. And we also are given a time. We want to know how much ibuprofen is still remaining after six hours. So here, this time our formula, we want to know the amount of ibuprofen after six hours. And that's going to be 400 times. This time our base is 1 minus 0 0.29, again, because that's exponential decay. The ibuprofen is being metabolized by our body, so that's going to get less over time. Raised to the power of 6. Again, once you have this formula at this point, calculator work. Make sure you're using your exponent button, not your multiplication button for that 6. And it turns out that it's 51.2 milligrams. Um, here's a special case of exponential growth. This is sort of a specialized formula, and it's one we use when we have a situation with interest that is compounded periodically. So you'll notice a lot of similarities between this formula and the one that we had before. Um, this time a, that's we called that a of t before because we wrote it in function notation, but a is, um, in economic terms, they call that the future value. That's the amount of money you have after time t. Uh, then we have our next variable, p. That's our starting amount, but in the economic terms, again, they call that the present value. Um, in here, uh, since we're gaining interest, the money is growing. We have 1 plus. Our interest rate is not just the rate anymore. It's the rate divided by n, which is the number of compounding periods in a year. And then our exponent's a little different, too. It's not just t. It's n times t. Okay, n is the thing, uh, the new variable here number of compounding periods per year. So if you're reading a word problem and they tell you that interest is compounded semi-annually, that would be an n equal to 2 because it happens twice a year. If they tell you your interest is com compounded quarterly, I think 4 quarters in a dollar, that would be n equals 4. That would be 4 times a year. Um, you might see monthly. Interest is compounded monthly, that would be 12 times a year. Uh, maybe weekly might be another one. There are 52 weeks in a year, so that would be 52 times a year and equals 52. Okay, so let's look at a problem. And this one says uh, you deposit $1,800 in a bank account that pays 2.5% annual interest compounded quarterly. How much money would you have after 18 months and how much would you have after 10 years? So first, just identify our variables. P, the amount we started with, is 1,800. Um, our interest rate is that 2.5%. Or in our problem, we're going to use 0 0.025, change it to the decimal. Uh, T, in this case, in our first example, first scenario is 18 months. And N is... It said compounded quarterly, so n is 4. Now we have to be careful here because it asked us for how much money are we going to have in 18 months, but in this formula, t always needs to be in terms of years. So we need to do a quick conversion, and maybe you know in your head that 18 months is a year and a half, or you do 18 divided by 12, and you get 1.5. 18 months is the same as 1.5 years, and that's what we want to use in our formula. So then we can fill in the blanks. Uh, the amount of money we'll end up with, our future value is our principal times 1 plus our interest rate divided by the number of compounding periods, or number of times it's compounded per year. And then our exponent is n times t, so that's 4 times 1.5. Again, this is calculator work once you have your formula all filled in. And when you enter this, on your calculator, you should get $1,868.56. Um, typically, when we're talking about money examples, we went around to two decimal places for dollars and cents. Um, this one has a follow-up question. How much money would you have after 10 years? We'll use the same formula that we have right here on this line. The only difference will be we'll change our um, T value, our time. 
So our future value, the amount of money we're going to end up with, is still 1,800 times 1 plus 0 0.025 divided by 4, because it's compounded quarterly. This time our exponent is 4 times 10 for 10 years. Same calculator work as before. Make sure you plug that all in. Be careful with your formula, and you should get $2,309.50. Um, here's another compound interest formula, compound interest problem, but in this case they kind of turned it around on us. You want to make sure you read these carefully. Uh, they didn't tell us how much money we started with. In this problem they told us how much money we are going to end up with. So let's read it and see here. Um, you plan to purchase a house in 10 years and want to save $10,000 for your down payment. How much would you need to deposit today in an account that earns 5.25% interest compounded monthly? So this time, what we know is not P, it's A. We know the future value. We know we want to end up with $10,000. They're asking us how much we are starting with. So that's what we're going to end up solving for. Um, our interest rate is 5.25% or 0 0.0525. Our time is 10 years. We're going to save up for 10 years. And N is the number of compounding periods in a year, since interest is compounded monthly. In this case, N is 12. So we use all of this information to fill in our formula. We get 10,000 is equal to P times 1 plus 0 0.0525 divided by N, which is 12, raised to the power of N, 12, times T, which is 10. Um, I will caution you when you do a problem like this um, on your calculator, it's tempting to do this little step at a time and then um, round your answer. Try not to round your answer until the very end. If you can, do 10, we'll solve for P, dividing both sides by this big exponential part over here. Uh, 12 times 10 is 120, I'm just going to write that out. So this is the calculation that we will do to get P. And again, if you can do that calculator, do it in your calculator all in one step, or keep the number in your calculator um, so you, do, you don't round until you get to the very end. And in this case, you should get that your present value, the amount you need to start with, would be $5,922.50. Um, we could also talk about things that have what we call continuous growth. Um, when we talk about continuous growth, we change our formula up a little bit. Instead of having a base of 1 plus our rate, our base is now e, which is uh, the natural exponent. Um, I have two versions of the formula here. The one on the left, this one is sort of the general form. Uh, we also have a financial version of this formula. If you have interest... that is compounded continuously, this is the formula we would use rather than the last one. Okay. Um, again, A of T, or in this formula on the right, A, that's the amount after time T, that's the amount you end up with. A sub zero, or P, if we're looking at the financial version, is your starting amount, principal. R is the rate, and T is the time. So let's apply this to an example here. Um, it says, nuclear energy derived from radioactive isotopes can be used to supply power to space vehicles. Suppose that the output of the radioactive power supply for a certain satellite is given by this function. Here it is, A of T, listed for us. In the function, the amount of power is measured in watts, and T is time in days. What is the starting wattage of the radioactive power? And then what will the power output be after one month? Well, for that first question, what is the starting wattage? We don't need to do any calculations. We just need to understand our formula. And compare this formula, our, our problem, to the um, format I have up here at the top. And notice that the number in place of a sub 0, a sub 0 is our starting amount, is 30. So that means that this radioactive power supply is starting at 30 watts. 
That's the answer to our first question. And then what will the power output be after one month? So for T, are we going to use 1 or are we going to use 30? Well, it's important to go back to the problem and tell us, go back to the problem and it tells us right here that T is time in days. So we want to use 30 for T when we're asking how much, will the, how much power will be left after 30 days. So A of 30 is 30, E to the negative 0 0.003 times 30 days. 30 goes in for T also. Um, again, this becomes a calculator problem. Make sure you can find that E button on your calculator, that E to the power. And when you type this in, you should get 27.4 watts. And then one last example, that we'll use the financial formula here. Um, if you deposit $4,500 in an account earning 3.2% interest compounded continuously, how much will you have after 14 years? Now, when you read this problem, this word continuously, that tells us which of our financial problem, financial formulas to use. And with continuously, you always want to use with the one with the E in it. Some people refer to this formula as A PERT. Um, a is our, the amount we're going to end up with. P is our starting value, oops, which is 45,000, not 4,000. I'm sorry, 4,500. Fix that. E to the R, which is 0 0.032, and T is 14. We want to know how much we'd have after 14 years. Uh, and when you plug this into your calculator, you should get $7,043.30. Again, rounding to the nearest hundredth, so we get our dollars and cents. And that's it.